How's it going everyone? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about motherboards and specifically all the ports on a motherboard and what they actually do and whether you need a cable on them or not. So let's go ahead and start from the top and just work ourselves around the motherboard and explain what these are. So typically on the top left of the board you're going to see either a 4 pin, an 8 pin, maybe an 8 pin and a 4 pin and sometimes on older boards there won't be anything here but these are all power cables for your CPU. You'll have one of the variants but this is dedicated power for your CPU and it comes from your power supply. Next over you might actually see a pump and or fan header here before you reach your RAM slots. It could be in this area around the middle top of the board. Uh, if it is a three pronged header like this it is going to be a system fan header and those you cannot control how much power is delivered it gives a constant 12 volts to those if it is a four pin or a four pronged one that like this that one you can actually control the speed of the fan because it can regulate how much voltage it actually gives to the fan and then sometimes motherboards actually have one dedicated to the pump which is also a four pin header but unlike the cpu fan header this one is designed to run the pump at full speed all the time the fourth pin here is meant to monitor the pump to ensure it is running and send out an error message or even in some cases stop the PC from turning on to save the CPU from overheating if the pump is not working. Sometimes up here you'll see these four pins. Those are typically for RGB strips so either RGB on a fan or RGB lights on just a strip. You'll see it looks similar to this diagram here. It's just four pins and that's where you can plug in just lights. It has no other purpose but powering lights. And next we have the big 24 pin power cable and this is going to provide power to the entire motherboard for everything from PCI lanes all the way to the little fan headers up there. So this, this distributes power to a lot of stuff on the motherboard. Basically anything that doesn't have its own dedicated power, this 24 pin connector will deliver power to. Next over you might actually find something that looks similar to this. So this is going to be your USB 3 front header. So this is how if you have USB 3 ports in the front of your case, you're going to have to run a cable to your motherboard and it's going to be a cable that looks like this, which is like a thicker cable and it has all these pins, but that's what's going to plug into your motherboard so your motherboard can communicate with whatever object you have plugged in to the front of your computer. All right, next in line here on this board, at least we have SATA connectors. So SATA is usually all bundled together like this. And if you have an M.2 installed running off SATA, some of these might be disabled. So you'll have to check with that. But if you are running certain drives, some of these can be disabled. But those are just SATA cables for your hard drives data. And some motherboards will actually have this. It is a U.2 drive. And a U.2 drive is just another form of an SSD hard drive. The only difference here is U.2 drives, while they also use PCIe lanes like M.2 drives, which you can learn more about M.2 drives in this video here, these have a much larger area than M.2, so you can actually put more on them. So U.2s are more meant for higher capacity fast speed SSDs. But that again is just a hard drive connection similar to SATA. All right, next up around the bottom right of the board, you'll see a bundle of different pins all labeled differently here and this is all your front IO. So this is what's going to be the little LED on the front of your computer telling whether you have hard drive activity, telling whether your computer is on. This is your reset switch, this is your power switch. This is all that stuff that's in the front of your computer. Technically you can run this without those. If you don't plug the power button one in, you won't be able to turn your computer on. You could leave most of these unplugged and they wouldn't have any effect on the actual function of your computer. All right, next over there is a couple different options here. So I'm going to put them all up on the screen at once we have audio, serial, and USB 2 ports because they all look very similar. So you'll, you're going to have to check the label on it and the configuration because the USB and serial are literally just flipped, but the audio one is very different. So if it is a USB 2, it is going to be all of them filled except for the bottom right. Serial is going to be all of them filled except for the top right. And then an audio connector will be kind of upper but one over. So you'll see it on the screen exactly what I'm talking about. But these are going to be how the pins are laid out. And basically the audio connectors for your front audio if you have a microphone headphone jack on the front of your case, that is going to be how that communicates with whatever headphones you plug in. The USB 2 is obvious. It is if you have USB 2 on the front, similar to how you had USB 3. This one is specific to USB 2 on the front. You can plug it in there and you can see it has a lot less pins. Um, and lastly, you have a serial port. 
And the serial port is basically probably not gonna be used in your case. This is used for older data transmissions, so you can add in a card for either connecting an old printer or modem or stuff like that. But typically today, this one isn't really used as much, but I'll have some use cases on the screen here for just some old hardware you can probably see that you'll probably will never buy. And after that guys, you'll usually see maybe a few more fan connectors, a few more RGB strip connectors depending on your board. The only other connector you might have a question about is this little guy that is just two pins. And that is gonna be a CMOS clear, or basically it clears your BIOS information. So this will only be used in a case where you cannot get into your computer at all and you need a physical reset. So what this will do is say you overclock something, it is bugging out your system, and so every time you turn your computer on, it immediately crashes and you can't even get into your BIOS once these two pins are connected together, which is what a jumper will do, it'll clear your BIOS information and reset it to the default, so that way you can get back into your computer in worst case scenario. And that is pretty much it. Uh, if I missed any, let me know in the comments. You have some weird connector on your computer uh, that for some reason was not in this video. I tried to pick a board here that had pretty much everything on it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to chat about them. And if you like this video, please give it a like. If you're not already subscribed, I'll do more videos like this. I'm trying to think of others, but if you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.